We're exploring the I problem the Apostle Paul describes in verses 14 to 25 of the seventh chapter. Paul says, I've got a sinful nature in me I still struggle with, even though I'm a believer. Last time I mentioned that salvation has three tenses. First of all, in the past tense, if you're a Christian, you've experienced justification by faith. Justification is when God looks at you because you put your faith in Jesus Christ and he declares you legally righteous, justified. That's not our righteousness, but it is the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we're in. And he says, you're not guilty. What does justification do? Justification removes the penalty for sin. Do you know what the penalty for sin is? Death, hell, separation from God forever and ever. When you become a Christian, God says the penalty for sin, boom, it's gone. But right now in the present tense, we are involved in the process of what's called sanctification. If you don't know what the word sanctification means, think of the another English word, sanitize. Over the past few years, that word has been drilled into our heads at an epic level as we were sanitizing everything all the time, washing our hands, washing our hands, washing our hands. To sanitize something means to clean it up, remove the germs. And what God is trying to do right now is trying to clean us up, trying to make us more like Jesus Christ. And it's a process. Philippians, the first chapter, Paul says, I'm confident that he who began this work in me is going to keep on completing it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's a process. What is he trying to do? He's delivering us from the power of sin because sin is still in our lives, even after we're Christians. And he's doing the process of delivering us from the power of sin. Now, future tense, one day when we die and meet Jesus Christ, we'll experience what the Bible calls glorification. That's when we'll be delivered from even the presence of sin because in heaven there is absolutely no presence of sin. Let's look at the middle tense because that's where we are right now. We're all in that place right now where God is trying to work on us to clean us up. One of the biggest problems we need to understand is what Paul wrote about here. You know, I really want to do the right thing, but I find myself wanting to do the right thing, but stumbling and doing the wrong thing. He says, I know all these things over here are wrong to do, and I don't want to do them, but sometimes I find myself accidentally and occasionally falling into those things. Now, if you've ever had the same kind of problem, then there's a word for you from the Word of God in this series about how to deal with that. People have debated about whether Paul was writing these words as a Christian or was he describing a person who was not a Christian? I believe without a doubt that Paul's talking about a Christian. Not only just a Christian, but I think he's describing the heart's cry of a maturing Christian because Paul uses the first personal pronoun because he uses present tense verbs. He's talking about right now. As he's writing these words, he's talking about this issue. We believe that Paul was saved around 35 AD. And we believe he wrote this letter to the Romans about 57 AD. That means that Paul had been a believer for 22 years. And after 22 years of knowing Jesus Christ, and as a maturing Christian, he says, I still have to deal with and confront sin. So I'd like to give you some characteristics of a maturing Christian. Notice I say maturing because it's not something you ever reach. You, you, you never say, I'm a mature Christian, because it's something you're always striving towards. Paul is saying a maturing Christian, number one, struggles with sin. He says, there's this war inside my body. There's this war inside my mind. There's this war inside my personality. There's a good nature and there's an evil nature and they're fighting against each other. And next time we're gonna talk more about this tug of war that we experience. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand that the struggle we have is natural. 
that as a Christian, we still struggle with sin. And that's okay that we struggle with sin. But there is hope and there is help daily for us. As we travel down this road together and you continue to teach us, I pray, Lord, that we would have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts and minds to understand that there is hope for us and that we're not alone in this struggle. In Jesus' name, amen. If my heart is a battleground, my defenses run both ways. The flesh is a beggar and thief. But there is a spirit man. Oh.